Hi, I'm Alicia Staley from Metadata. I'm the Senior Director of Patient Engagement, and today I'm talking about the digital transformation in the life sciences industry. Really to look at how pharma has changed and, and the life sciences industry in general and in reference to technology, it, it, if you look back 5, 10, even 15 years, the landscape today is so different. For me personally, uh, I'm a three-time cancer survivor and from when I was first diagnosed to where where we are today with, with technology, it's, it's worlds away. I mean, we've got the concept of precision medicine, we've got um, you know, very specific genomic and genetic testing that can be done today in life sciences. Um, and that, that generates a lot of data. And we, we're at a sort of a big data moment in life sciences. Um, and we need tools where we can analyze the data sets that, we're, that are being created today. Um, we've got uh, additional uh, tech advancements like AI, where we're starting to layer artificial intelligence into our, our data analytics and, and analysis in ways that I don't even think were possible five years ago, let alone 10 years ago. Um, and the way that we're running trials now today is so different than what the experience was even a few years ago. You've got the ability to virtualize some of the trial components today. You've got uh, the power of the smartphone um, that literally you can take a trial, <laughs> a clinical trial can go with you anywhere that you're, the patient is essentially. Um, and it's just, we've, we've got so much computing power today in our phones and some of the devices that we carry that uh, it's opening up doors to, to opportunities that we never even thought were possible. And I think it's just an amazingly exciting time in the life sciences industry. In general, the, the technological advances have definitely been um, in the patient's favor, there's no question about it. Uh, but a lot of what we're seeing in the U.S. right now uh, is around the concept of data portability or interoperability. So those are big issues that a lot of the patient advocacy organizations in the states are focused on. And we've got electronic health records, there's a lot of information going in there, um, but it's not always easy to get the information out. It's not always easy to build a collaborative framework that allows for multiple um, members of a, a patient's healthcare team to sort of uh, work together and collaborate with. And um, that, I think, is a disappointment. But uh, on the flip side, you know, we've got, you can walk around with a, a Fitbit or some sort of tracker today uh, that helps improve fitness, that is giving patients insights into different aspects of, of their life. How are you sleeping? How, you know, how is, how is your heart? How is your lungs? Um, you're getting more insights into how your body works every day and I think that that's been a pleasant surprise for a lot of patients to have access and information at that level. Um, and you're seeing people really change some of their, their lifestyles and some of their habits. Anytime that there's innovation in an industry, you know, historically the, the response has always been, well, this is a new technology. It, 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 our cost must be going up because we had to buy a new solution or <laughs> we needed this new piece of software to run a process. And I think w what happens is over time you begin, there's efficiencies that you'll gain from, from new solutions, new software uh, that will drive costs down actually. Um, but I, I think that if anything, the, the concept of healthcare cost and, and the conversations that we're all starting to have, it, really on a global level, it is good not only for industry but for the patient populations as well. Because I think it's um, allowing us to begin to have very collaborative conversations around how do we improve and make further advances. So um, the, the talking points might be about higher costs or, or higher investments are needed to deliver this new solution, but ultimately, uh, I think it's shining a light on the concept of cost that we've never really been able to look at before, um, and we're doing it in ways that um, are uh, really allowing for a two-way conversation between patients and, and the industry for the first time. In my 
personal experience as a cancer survivor, cancer patient, and my professional experiences as a software engineer, a solutions developer. Um, so my cancer career and my software career were really in parallel. What I'm seeing is we have an opportunity really for the first time to begin to pull the patient perspective in uh, and have industry sort of reflect on that and, and work with that in ways that we haven't been able to do before. I think there's a number of ways that we can do this. I think that um, patients are becoming more comfortable with their stories and sharing their stories, um, but sharing their stories in a way that, that's actionable. Um, so it's not just, hey, I'm a cancer survivor uh, and I had chemo. It's, hey, I'm a cancer survivor. I went through the clinical trial process and this is how I wanna help make it better for the next generation of patients that unfortunately might have to go through this. Um, and I think what, what we're seeing is you've got a very educated group of patient advocates, patient advocacy organizations around the world uh, that are working with industry uh, in a very collaborative fashion. Particularly at Metadata, we have opportunities to bring the patient voice in um, to our development life cycle through patient workshops that we're running. Uh, we've launched a concept called patient centricity by design, where we're taking the best of design thinking methodology and, and really using that in part of our, as part of our software development life cycle to help bring the patient voice into uh, software development in a very iterative fashion.